During the exterior inspection, you have to check the condition of the three angle of attack, AOA probes. The two captain and first officer static ports. The three pedo probes. The two standby static ports. The two total air temperature, TAT probes, and the different navigation antennas located at the lower center fuselage. Then, as the electricity has been already connected, the push button switches on the adders panel must be checked in the lights out position. Then the selectors must be set to nav as soon as possible in order to provide the different aircraft systems with the adders data. So, we will do it for you. When the selectors are set from off to nav, a complete alignment process is launched. A complete alignment must be performed if it is the first flight of the day or the GPS is not available and long segments are in poor evade coverage. The amber on bat light comes on for a few seconds only at the beginning of a complete alignment as a test of the battery circuit. For other flights, a fast alignment is necessary only if the residual ground speed is greater than 5 knots, displayed on the related MD for IRS 1 and 2, and on the MD 1 for IRS 3 by switching the ATT heading selector to Captain 3. A fast alignment is performed by setting the three selectors to off, then within 5 seconds, back to nav. This resets the ground speed to zero. Note, a complete alignment will take around 10 minutes, and a fast alignment will take around 30 seconds. Few seconds after the electricity has been connected, the PFDs and NDs display red flags as shown, until the adders selectors are set to nav. As soon as the adders are set to nav, a green memo message appears. It indicates that the alignment process has started. This is also indicated by the change on the PFDs, showing the data from the adders. Then, after a few seconds, the PFDs show the attitude data. Then, you have first to enter a company root code or a city pair, ICAO codes for city of origin and destination. In the init A page of the MCDU, when the GPS is available, the position initialization is automatic. The GPS position will be used by the IRSs without pilot intervention. However, automatic initialization can be manually overridden by the pilot at any moment during the alignment phase. You access the IRS init page by pressing the IRS init prompt key. The latitude and longitude shown in this page are those of the departure airport's reference point coming from the database. If necessary, the latitude can be adjusted by using the up and down scroll keys. Also the longitude can be adjusted, but before using the scroll keys, the one right key must be pressed in order to transfer the up down symbol as shown. This can be used to enter the gate precise coordinates. Note, if the coordinates match with the airport reference point, the airport identifier is displayed in green. Otherwise it is replaced by dashes. To initialize the aders with the displayed coordinates, the align on ref prompt key must be pressed. This changes to confirm align prompt. If it is pressed again, the coordinates displayed on the line 1 are sent to the IRSs. This is confirmed by the IRS aligning on ref as shown. When a city pair 
has been entered on the MCDU. The indication at the top right corner changes as shown. When a SID has been entered, the two-way point is displayed as shown. Four minutes after setting the address to nav, the IRS in a line message on the engine warning display counts down the time remaining until full alignment is completed. Then, few seconds after, the heading information is provided, as shown. Then, when the countdown has reached, one minute, it remains displayed until nav mode is activated, as shown. Occasionally, during a turnaround, a residual ground speed can necessitate an IRS rapid realignment. This information is displayed on the related ND, as already explained, but it is also accessed through the IRS monitor page. For that, the data index page has to be called up on the MCDU, and the related LS key must be pressed. Selecting one of the IRS gives access to its specific page. From this page, you can check the residual ground speed of IRS 1, then access the other IRS's to carry out a rapid alignment, all three mode selectors have to be switched off, then on, within 5 seconds. Otherwise, a complete alignment will take place and the on-bat light will come on for a few seconds. Also, during a fast alignment, the ADRS residual ground speed resets to zero. Therefore, the aders will start the position computation with an accurate initial speed. We are now in cruise flight. If the aircraft is not equipped with GPS or if GPS primary is not available, the navigation accuracy check must be performed. The indication Nav Accuracy Upgrade has appeared at the bottom of the MD and in the MCDU scratch pad, meaning that the navigation accuracy level has automatically switched from low to high. We will see now how to perform a navigation accuracy check. The objective of the navigation accuracy check is to compare the raw data from the tuned NOVADES with the corresponding FM computed data. If your aircraft is equipped with GPS primary, no accuracy check is required as long as GPS primary is available. The GPS mode can be checked on the progress page. If the GPS is no longer primary, the message GPS primary lost is displayed on the MD and in the MCDU scratch pad. Notice that the navigation accuracy level stays at high. Nevertheless, the navigation accuracy has to be verified. This check has to be performed whenever the following cases occur. IRS-only navigation. The progress page displays low accuracy. Navigation accuracy downgrade message appears on the MCDU and on the ND. To perform this check, you have to use the selected nav aids and display them on the ND. We have set the ND range to 80. The VOR Sierra Papa Romeo has been manually tuned on receiver 1 and the VOR Papa Alpha Sierra on receiver 2. Note that the VOR Papa Alpha Sierra is the two waypoint of the flight plan. 
There are two ways to do this check. The first method is to compare the two waypoint distance and bearing, which is FM computer data, with the corresponding nerve DME distance and bearing. We have called the progress page. The second method is to insert a VOR DME ident in the field bearing distance 2 on the progress page and to compare the computed bearing distance with the raw data on the MD. We have typed the VORDME item SPR in the scratch pad for you. We will insert it in bearing distance 2 by pressing the LS key for right. We now have on the progress page the computed bearing and distance to the selected nav aid. The distances shown on the ND and on the progress page can be compared. The last method consists in checking that the raw data needle passes through the blue FMGS generated symbol for the VOR DME and that the position of this symbol corresponds to the DME distance. Whatever method is used, if the error is less than 3 nautical miles, the check is positive and the FN position is reliable. The SOP recommends to use the ND in ARC or navigation mode and managed lateral guidance. If the error is greater than 3 nautical miles, you can consider that the FM position is not reliable. In such a case, the SOP recommends to use raw data for navigation and to monitor it.